Thank you. Now, I'm sure you all know about the Equestria Games, where ponies from all over the land compete for glory. Oh my god! What's wrong with your face? So a while back, my pal Voice of Reason mentioned to me that Ponyville Confidential is the best CMC episode. And while that's quite obviously not true, it did get me thinking, what is the best CMC episode? There really wasn't one that stood out above the rest. Well, thankfully, that is no longer the case. This is by far and away the best CMC episode to date, if not one of the best episodes of the entire series. This episode is fucking good. To start things off, you've got to love the setup of this episode's subplot, with Miss Harshwini asking Dash to remain professional. It shows some great depth in Dash. She has real passion for judging these performances, but also respects Miss Harshwini's need for her to stay calm and professional. But what is really funny is that it was probably Dash's overly emotional, unprofessional attitude that convinced most of the foals in the classroom to take part. The song isn't a personal favourite of mine, nothing particularly catchy about the tune and no memorable lyrics. What does hearts as strong as horses even mean? Do horses have particularly strong hearts? The visuals, however, were pretty awesome. That sunset, the symbolic image of the horse shadow, and that whole training montage sequence. Wait, what were they even training for? They hadn't even decided what to do yet. Wait, no. Can't nitpick. This is a good episode, remember. So, um, Snowflake is scared of butterflies. That is freaking hilarious. Also, do the CMC have this special ability to enter into music videos? So far, they are the only characters in the show that have been able to do that. Oh, great, Diamond Tiara. And she's tormenting them by calling them blank flanks again. Don't you have any other ways of insulting them? But what do you know? The CMC basically just roll their eyes and tell them that it's an irrelevant point as far as the competition goes. Not only are they no longer obsessing over not having cutie marks, but they understand that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are just trying to get under their skin, and they are not going to listen to anything they have to say. But wait a minute, Buck. Later in the episode, Scoodaloo- Hey, I'm coming to that. Give me time. Another awesome bit of continuity comes with the CMC still using their props from Showstoppers. But why are Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon watching from the bushes? That's kind of creepy. Do they just take satisfaction from seeing other ponies fail? No. Don't do this, Buck. This is a good episode. Positive stuff. Uh, the term amazing amazingness is too adorable for words. And now the moment that really made me love this subplot with Dash. By containing her emotions and not telling the CMC how good she thought the performance was, the CMC start questioning their performance and thinking it needs to be improved in some way. See? The subplot becomes relevant to the main plot. That's how you do a subplot. Jesus Christ, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon basically admit here that Blank Flank is literally all they have on the CMC, and that they are only doing this to get under their skin. Good lord, could these characters be any more shallow? I mean, no. No, don't do this. This is a good episode. And hey, I guess you could argue that the way that they admit these flaws themselves is a good bit of lampshading. Although I love it when Diamond Tiara narrows her eyes and the screen also narrows. And here we finally get confirmation of what I and a lot of other fans have suspected for a while. Scoodaloo can't fly and that's unusual for a Pegasus of her age. Once again, the CMC appear at first to just roll their eyes and dismiss it as Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon trying to wind them up. So not only have they gotten over the issue of not having cutie marks, but they have also learned to let whatever Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon say to them just go over their heads. How can you not love this growth in maturity from the CMC? So what about Scoodaloo? It certainly looks like she's taken in what Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon have said, because after pointing out that she can't fly, that's what Scoodaloo immediately tries to incorporate into the performance. Why would Scoodaloo listen to anything Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon have to say when they are clearly just trying to wind them up? Well, I don't think it's really anything to do with what they have said, or even that it's them saying it. It's more just that they have pointed out something that Scoodaloo wasn't even thinking about until they mentioned it. And now that they have mentioned it, Scoodaloo is suddenly bothered by it. 
See, with any form of disability in another person, be it mental or physical, the polite thing to do is not to draw attention to it, pretend it's not there and treat the person like you would do anyone else. So I don't think it's too far-fetched to assume that Scoodaloo may have gone years without any pony even mentioning to her that she can't fly. She may have put it to the back of her mind and all but forgotten about it. So when Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon mention it, this issue resurfaces in Scoodaloo's mind, so she decides to do something about it. She's not listening to what Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon have said, it's just that once they have pointed it out, she can't help but let herself be bothered by it. Then we see something I've really wanted to see from the CMC for a long time. Real friction. See, with these groups of friendships in kids shows, there is always the danger of turning them into clones of one another. They always agree and want to do the same thing. And while the three members of the CMC clearly do have different personalities, it's always seemed a bit unrealistic to me. Kids of that age do not get along that well. So seeing this rift between the three of them was great and shows more development from them as a group dynamic. I also love that Apple Bloom is the one to really say how she feels, while Sweetie Belle is a bit more uneasy about saying what she thinks, because that does seem like the way I'd expect those two characters to react. After working them all day to exhaustion, and then just quitting on them at the last minute, it's understandable why Apple Bloom would be mad at her. Sweetie Belle being a much softer type of character is less willing to say what she really thinks, she just goes along with what Apple Bloom is saying. That whole scene at the train station was just heated enough that it felt natural, without ever making me dislike any of these characters. More great advice from Dash as she teaches Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle that they shouldn't leave Scootaloo just because they think she's a quitter. She's their friend and they need to stand by her, whatever she might think. Dash, along with Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle, proceed to explain to Scootaloo that inability to fly does not define her. Dash is a great flyer because that's who Dash is, not Scootaloo. Scootaloo needs to define herself by what she can do and is, in all honesty, probably better off struggling with her flight since it gave her the chance to become so adept on her scooter. This scene also debunks on a theory a lot of fans had, that Scootaloo was homeless. Though we still haven't seen her parents. Even with this reprise, I'm still not feeling it with this song. It doesn't really fit well with Scootaloo racing through town, but I like the return of the narrowed eyes and narrowed screen perspective. While this bit with Scootaloo racing through the countryside is at least an attempt to explain how they got to the Crystal Empire in time, it still seems a bit far-fetched that they could catch up with the train when it had such a big head start. Also, while the contest isn't really what the episode is about, it does kind of bug me that the CMC's performance is literally the only one we see in the entire episode. But hey, no episode is perfect. Almost no episode is perfect. And we finish with an awesome twist of the subplot with Dash and Miss Harshwini, as Miss Harshwini loses control, and a little bit of a cock tease with Scootaloo looking at her flank. It's going to happen this season, guys. I can feel it. But it won't be in flat carrying. Also, you know we are going to actually see the Equestria games now. Man, I am loving the continuity this season. This plot reminded me a lot of the subplot in Finding Nemo with Nemo's gimpy fin. I loved the idea of giving the kid character a physical disability, and I was disappointed they didn't do more with it. So this episode was also awesome on a personal level, because it gave me the plot I wished Finding Nemo had given us. So overall, while I would not go as far to say I loved everything about this episode, the song didn't do it for me, and seeing the contest at the end seemed kind of unnecessary since we knew the CMC were going to win. At the heart of what it is really about, this episode worked to perfection. However unsure you might be about yourself because of any physical or mental flaw you might have, you shouldn't let that affect your confidence in doing anything you want to. It's part of who you are, and you should embrace that. As you might be able to tell, I liked this episode a lot, and is certainly in my personal top 10 of the entire series. Maybe even top 5. More great advice from Dash as she... God's sake, I'm getting sick of this.